videos in a very short span. What's up? Uh, well, I'll tell you what's up. What's up? I'm gonna tell you what's up. I got a new band project going. It's called Driving Miss Crazy, Milwaukee band. Uh, right now we're all covers, but you know, there's talks. There's talks. So I just built this new rig. I did a video on it uh, two videos ago, maybe. And I wanted to update this video because now it is finalized. This rig is done, complete. The rack is done and the pedal board is done. And I wanted to run through everything I got going from guitar yeah, to speakers and explain everything that's going on. Because I got, I have learned a couple of little tricks along my many, many years, many, many years many years of playing and being a, a gear addict. I love gear. I've always loved messing around with gear. Um, when I was younger, I didn't have any money. And so I had to make whatever I could afford, try and sound as best as I could. So I was always experimenting with stuff, trying different things out, trying to come up with the sound that I was looking for or trying to find in my head that would sound good to me. If you've seen a few of my videos, I've gone through a lot of different amplifiers in the last 10 years or so. I was fortunate enough to try out many, many high-end amplifiers. Um, Bogner, uh, I just got rid of a Wizard uh, K... Wizard K... With wizard something other $5,500 amplifier um, so I've had a lot of different amps and and I've also gone through my share of the modelers uh, fractal axe effects rack mount fractal AX8 stuff uh, the Kemper profiler all of that stuff and well I mean put it this way if I really was digging any of that stuff I'd still be using it and as you can see, I'm not. I actually went backwards to get what I was looking for. And I kind of explained that in the first video when I talk about this, this rig. Um, Marshall, G, J, Marshall JMP1 preamp, some stuff, and I want to explain everything. So uh, let's take uh, kind of like a deep dive into my rig. So I'm just, from the guitar, I'm going to try and pull up some pictures of everything. I'm going to explain it. And as I'm explaining it, I'm going to try and show the pictures of it. From the guitar, I'm going into a Shore DLX or ULX. You know what, hang on one second. All right, so from the guitar, I'm going into a Shure GLX dash D pedal wireless. I'm not using it at the moment, but normally I would have the wireless. From the wireless, I'm going into a Dunlop wah pedal. I'm not exactly sure of the model, but it's the one that's spring activated. So when you step on it, it automatically turns on Wah, 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 wah. When you let off of it, it automatically shuts off. From there, I'm going into the Whammy DT pedal. Um, this new project that I'm in, we're doing a lot of songs that are in different tunings, and I thought I would give the Whammy, uh, the Digitech stuff, a try. At first, I had the drop pedal so we could play in lower keys, and I wanted to see how that sounded. I thought it sounded fine. To my ears, it sounded fine. So what I did is I ended up selling that to the bass player so he, has, he doesn't have to mess around with different tunings. He uses the drop pedal. I'm using the Whammy DT where it's got the Whammy on one side and then the drop pedal on the other side. From the Whammy pedal, I go into my tried and true Boss TU3 tuner. From the tuner, it goes into the RJM RG16. 
And this, this side is if I wanted to control uh, amplifiers and different things. I don't use this side at all. I'm only using for the eight loops. I'm only using seven loops, but I'm only using it for the looper. And in the loops, I have my pedals. First pedal is a Keeley, Keeley White Sands Boost Overdrive. I have it set on the boost side, kind of a cleaner boost um, signal. In loop two, I got the Keeley Red Dirt Overdrive. That's what I'm using to kind of give the front of the Marshall a little, little extra oomph. Loop number three is my 70s MXR Phase 90. Loop number four is my, this is an original DOD 440 envelope filter. It's just that I had, back when I had a few pedals, I took them to this place and had them powder coated. I wish I would have never done that with this pedal. It is what it is, but this is a vintage one. Loop number five, I got this modified Boss GE7 EQ. I can't remember who did the mod, but I'm basically using this for a little bit of a mid boost that I use for one of my patches, actually a few of my patches on my pedal board. It gives it, it this, this is what I'm, this is the sound you're hearing right now is with this Red Dirt and the Boss GE7 mid boost. It gives me, it gives me kind of like that Randy Rhodes vibe. That, with a, with a real heavy chorus. Uh, loop five. Loop six is open. I don't even, I don't even think I have room on this for a six. Loop seven is my old DOD FX70 stereo flanger that I use basically uh, just for kooky effects, kind of. Stuff like that. Loop 8 is my vintage uh, MXR flanger. Whenever I want that flanger, that's the flanger I use. So from the RG16, that's when I go into the Marshall Jam P1 preamp. Um, I actually have two of these now, and I'm thinking they're both stock, and I'm thinking about sending one of them off to uh, Trace at Voodoo Amps. I guess he does a really killer mod for these preamps. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm really digging the way it sounds, the way it is stock. So I'm thinking if I send him that other one I have and I get it back, am I gonna like it more than I like the stock one? So I'm still kind of up in the air about doing that. From the Marshall JMP1, I send two signals left and right into my TC Electronics G-Force. <coughs> Excuse me. The G-Force I'm using mainly for chorus, delay, my gate, and sometimes uh, uh, the tremolo. From the TC Electronics G-Force, I go down left and right into this old Rocktron and Telefex LTD. I really wanted to try and find a black-faced one, but everyone I bought off eBay or Reverb, it always seemed like something was wrong with them. They weren't working properly, so I'd send them back. This one was practically in mint, new old stock condition. I, I paid a little more for it, but I really like the Intellifex. Uh, I use it for uh, Reverb, and I like the pitch, the octave down. It just, all the different octave pedals I've tried, and even I have a pitch in the G-Force, it just doesn't sound as good to me as the Rock Tried and Telefax. So, it actually holds chords very well too. So, from the Rocktron and Telefex, 
Here's where things get a little dicey, spicy. I send one signal directly into my Fryat uh, 292 tube power amp. Then I send the other, the other signal goes into an old Roland SDE 1000 where I have it set for, it's, it's just all delay. There's no uh, mixed signal at all, it's all delay. So if I, if I was to be real drastic and put a heavy delay on it, all right, so something, these things are really finicky. I just want you to hear where it would be just all delay to give you an idea. So, so it's one side is just all delay. This is going to be a little bit more drastic so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first sound you're hearing is the IntelliFX going right into the power amp. The second sound is just a delay. So I have that set at 11 milliseconds because these things are notorious for just kind of dropping down just by being on. So that's going to eventually drop down to 10 milliseconds and maybe 9 point whatever. But that's, and then from there it goes into the Fryhead power amp. And that's what gives it that real wide stereo spread because I'm running two cabinets where it just sounds huge and wide and it's just cool. So that's my rack, that's my rig, and now I want to uh, kind of show you what I got going on with my pedal board because I, I'm on my third MIDI controller. First I started out with a, uh, a Voodoo Lab Ground Control Pro, and it works just fine. It's just that with the Ground Control Pro, the way I have it set up, I'm just using it as a MIDI switcher. None of that fancy instant access stuff or whatever. And it only gives you 10 presets before you have to bank up or down. And I wanted more presets than just 10. I have more than 10 different sounds with this new project. So then I switched over to the uh, Rocktron MIDI Raider. That gave me 15 presets, but the buttons were just a little too close together and sometimes I would go to hit it, and you know, you're on stage, you're moving around. I'd slip, maybe hit the wrong button, especially when you're going up the rows. So I'm just like, come on, man, I, I need something that I want. And, and I'm looking around, looking around, and I just, I totally said, basically, fuck it. I'm biting the bullet, I'm getting the big dog of MIDI switchers, and that's when I picked up the RJM Mastermind GT22. And the way I have this set up is the kind of light blue colored presets. Those are my presets. Those switch sounds, patches, all of that for different songs and such. And then I have four patches, four buttons that are red colored. Those are my instant access switches where one's the DOD flanger, one's the DOD 440, one's the MXR flanger, and one is the Phase 90. And then up top, I got my two bank up and bank down. I haven't had to use anything more than what I got programmed into this thing right now. So I'm going to set the camera up kind of over the, uh, the, the pedal board, and I'm going to kind of run through some of the different things and the different patches and presets I got and show you what I'm using the whammy for and all of that stuff. So let's check that out.
Let's watch. And please, a as I go through all of these, really, there's no need to make any comments about the old man shoes I'm wearing. I get it. I'm 53, I'm 50, I'm 54 years old. They're comfortable and I like wearing them. So here's the, uh, here's the uh, uh, wireless unit I was talking about. And then the wah, like I said, when you, when you, when you turn it on, it goes on. And from there, I go into the whammy. Now, when I'm using the whammy side of this, I'm basically only using it for the one octave up. So when I turn it on, so like when I'm doing solos and stuff, I'll, you know, I'll hit a note. And then this side is the uh, drop pedal. And the cool thing about this one is it not only lets you go down, it also lets you go up. So right now I got it set. Uh, one of the songs we're learning is uh, Kickstart My Heart. So for the Motley Crue tuning. So, uh, we go, uh, we do some Van Halen and Alice in Chains where I'm only down a half step. And we're actually going to go, we're going to try and play that song by, uh, what's the, what do they call it? It's Queens of the Stone Age, that I, I think it's called No One Knows. And he's tuned down two whole steps. So, this will work for that. So, it's that. Uh, That song, I, I haven't even tried to learn it yet, but I know that's where the tuning is. So that's the uh, drop tune. Then into my tuner, trusty tuner. And now the pedal board. Um, I'm gonna try and get a little different angle in here and uh, zoom in on it for you guys. All right, so first off we have the, the netty stands. That's kind of like my main patch. Um, I'm running the red dirt into my JMP1. Uh, a little bit of chorus from the G Force and a little bit of reverb from the IntelliFX. <laughs> then I go to my solo patch, which is basically the same as that patch, but with a little bit of delay. Then I got my 500 delay that I use for different things. Then my octave down, which is uh, coming from the IntelliFX. Then I got a semi-crunch patch, which is all the pedals are off and, I, <clears throat> and I'm straight into the JMP1 with no pedals, just with a little bit of a slight chorus that I use for uh, stuff like uh, we do Fortunate Sun. <laughs> Then 
kind of so that it's easier you know that kind of a cleaner semi crunch then my ACDC patch is no chorus um, the loop one for the white sands give it a little extra ump <laughs> Then my Van Halen is, uh, you know, kind of a solo patch where I'm, I am running the boost pedal and uh, overdrive together along with my phase 90 and a little bit of delay. And then my Randy Rhodes patch, which is like I explained earlier, uh, red dirt along with the Boss GE7 with that mid-range boost and a real heavy chorus. <laughs> then uh, I have a one millisecond delay, kind of a little longer delay. Then my clean sound. Um, I actually got to work on my clean sound. I'm really not too happy with it. You can barely hear it. I need a little bit of a boost on that. So that's the one. That's the one part of this equation. I still need a little tweaking. Then I have a spill send and a spill receive. We do. Uh, I also play in a band called the Hellion, Judas Priest cover band. And at the end of the uh, Victim of Changes solo, where it goes, uh, uh, oh, hang on, hang on, here we go. Well, right when I get to that part, I hit that delay, and then I'll do this riff, and then I'll, you'll, you'll hear it, and then I'll hit the spill receive, and while you're still hearing the delay, I'll start that clean part. So it's... That's that kooky thing. Then I got more of a, uh, more with the octave, uh, I call it the 18th string. It's uh, coming from the Intellifex. I use it for we do Kiss Me Deadly by Lita Ford and uh, the part that goes. <laughs> And then I have Cathedral, and that <clears throat> is pretty self-explanatory. So that's Cathedral, and then Ping Pong is basically at the end of the set, or at the end of the night, when we're, you know, finished, getting ready to finish, you know, we're hitting the chord, you know. When I hit that very last chord, I hit the ping pong button, and what that does is it, it ping pongs from left to right to left to right. It's really cool. And that would be going left to right, left to right. And then I shut it off when I'm done. Call it a night.
And that's my Mastermind GT22. I love this thing. Here are my instant access switches for my four pedals that I use them. My DOD envelope filter. It's basically, it's basically like an auto wah. MXR flanger. And my phase 90. That is my rig. Well, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was brought to you by me. So, if you're in Milwaukee and you wanna come see my new band, Driving Miss Crazy, we're on Facebook. Um, I believe we have an Instagram page. Check it out. Uh, our singer, Jackie Brown, she's a phenomenal singer. She's been part of the Milwaukee music scene for a while, everyone loves her. She's got a great set of pipes. We got Barry Yeager on the drums. You should see this guy's drum set. Man, this thing is, uh, this thing is, uh, it may, you know, his drum set makes my rig look tiny and just minuscule. It makes me want to get like six more orange cabinets. Oh yeah, by the way, I run two 412 orange bottoms where I have one, they're all vintage 30s except for one speaker in each of them is a, um, a Celestian 25 watt greenback. That's the speaker that gets mic'd up. It's just the sound I like, so. What you're hearing tonight is I have a stereo cabinet that I, I use for practice here, so. That's my rig, um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'm probably gonna do uh, my next video on uh, I have no idea. What are you gonna do? As I was making this video, I completely forgot to mention my bass player, uh, KK, Kevin Kennelly. Phenomenal bass player. I used to play with a band called Black Frog. They opened up for ACDC here in Milwaukee. They were a staple on the Milwaukee music scene. Awesome bass player. Just wanted to give a shout out to KK because I don't want him beating me up, man. This guy is scary. Just a big biker tattooed wanna rip your throat out yeah. so KK don't get mad at me man I messaged you oh.